Is it Damon? David or Damon? <laughs> I was watching a TikTok. It was like, these are some black names. Damon, Rhaenyra, Daenerys. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it really does sound like that. Hello, hello, welcome to Tita Takes. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, Tita Takes is a platform where we celebrate, highlight, and really recognize creative works of literary and performance arts created by people of color. And today, we are gonna be watching one of my favorite new shows, The House of Dragon, now streaming on HBO Max. So. Sorry I didn't do the first two episodes, guys, because <laughs> to be honest, this show doesn't really, isn't really in line with, you know, my platform and it not being created by people of color. But I've been, you know, locked into the internet lately and I've been seeing a lot of conversation about um, the inclusion of diverse characters in fantasy worlds. And apparently there are some people mad about it. There are some people mad about this show right now because they have casted uh, House Valerian as a black house. So there's black characters in main characters um, in um, Game of Thrones or House of Dragons, sorry, not Game of Thrones. By the way, I will be calling it Game of Thrones. I just want to let you know, like I can't separate the two. <laughs> but yeah, so there are, there's inclusion of black characters in uh, Game of Thrones, whatever, it doesn't matter, distinction. And there are a lot of people who have a lot of things to say about it so I thought you know why not support the show why not support uh, these actors by watching uh, episode 3 which is what we'll be starting on episode 3 of House of Dragons and to all the people who maybe not my people all the people the people who have a problem with casting diverse talent in fantasy shows explain <laughs> if your suspension of belief um if you could suspend belief for like dragons and magic and things like that but you can't for diversity let's talk about it down in the comments what do y'all think about this conversation um i truly i think it's racism but you know like i don't know maybe i'm wrong Anyways, let's just watch it. Okay, so episode three, House of Dragons. Let's go, baby. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Also, give this video a thumbs up. It really helps a lot with the algorithm. It's starting. Oh, wow. Okay, this must be, that's a ship. So this must, they must be on the stepstones right now. And this is the crab feeder. He is very scary looking. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Ooh. This show is never not gory. Wow, this guy has a lot of passion. That's a dragon. That's a dragon. That's Caraxes. Here he comes. Here Damon comes. I just don't see how this guy is gonna survive this. How is Damon going to see you from up there? He's like, oh no, that's my boy. That's my boy, I'm not going to get him. Let me let me burn around. Oh my god. Kind of just proved my point. <laughs> At least he didn't get eaten by the crabs. Honestly, I'd rather be crushed by a dragon's foot than eaten by crabs alive. So, he did him a favor. Is there a baby? Okay, so we got another type of... Yes, he does. There, Alicenko. With the Troa here now sheltering in Bloodstone's case, the threat of the dragons is blunted. They don't have foot soldiers. Yeah, my buffet looks good. I'm not gonna lie. Where's Rhaenyra? All this be sure talk. The Valarian forces have suffered heavy attrition, Your Grace. About the insecurity of the realm. Sown amongst the rank and file. And he just wants to know where is Rhaenyra? They have begun to quit. It seems like of his duty between king and father, he cares more about being a father. The dragons That's a really cool shot. Kind of like a fishbowl shot. Rhaenyra? Yes, my queen. Okay, they're not good. <laughs> Your presence is wanted in the outer court. They're not good. They're not good. You want to stay by order the princess. The queen commands you to leave the gods oh. once. Looks like Allison found her voice. Rhaenyra has like fire in her. Rhaenyra is the opposite of complacent. Like she is stubborn, 
which makes me feel like she's closer in line with being similar to Damon than she is her own father. But I wonder where she got to, gets it from. And I, but I think it's just the Targaryen in her and maybe just skipped a generation because Viserys does not have the same fire at all. He just wants kumbaya, he just wants peas. Princess, and you have duties. As I am ceaselessly reminded. I'm sorry? As I am ceaselessly reminded. You need oh my god, this is such a, like, a teen. She's got so much teen eggs. <laughs> This is quite opulent for a, a two-year-old's birthday party. That no king has ever been able to tame the stepstones for long. It's an inhospitable place suited only for savages. So, like the people, the high-born folks are talking about the stepstones. Viserys just thinks he could sweep it under the rug, but like people are talking, people are talking about it. Lord Jason Lannister. Gather that. I think this is the first Lannister we're seeing on the show. He looks like a Lannister. Mm. Across the He's definitely hitting on her. He's trying to secure King. Why would you need a dragon head? Dows or dragons? Dows dragons, of course. Oh shit, I don't know. Lady I wife. got the line right. <laughs> or lady wife. Lady wife. Lady wife. Wouldn't he? If she's gonna be queen, that's concerning to me and my home girl. It is because I do not wish to get married. Even I do not exist to buck tradition and duty, Rhaenyra. Excuse me, Your Grace. <laughs> Rhaenyra right is pissed. She sees, she doesn't trust anyone. It feels like everyone is conspiring against her and she feels alone in the world. And even, like the one person who she was able to confide in married her father and became a player in the game. I get it. She's arrogant. She's stubborn. She's frustrated. She's confused. She doesn't trust anyone, not even her own father. Yeah, I get it. You held enough power to write my name into the White Book. When your father named me to his king's guard, it was the highest honor any court would ever known. All that I have, I owe to you. Now I'd hardly call that too for Spencer. Love that. Love that. Give this girl some perspective. I do on this day of all days. Um, I've never been one for signs of importance, Your Grace, but if the gods did wish to show their favor. So basically, Otto is saying that the, the sighting of a white stag is an omen or sign of royalness. Seeing it on his birthday is an omen, a sign of, of royalty. Your Grace, I, 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 I did not mean... decide to name Rhaenyra my heir on a whim. All the lords of the kingdom would do well to remember that. Let him know, Viserys. You're not only Rhaenyra's father, you're the king. <laughs> She'll do as you command. It is not my wish to command her. Amen! I want her to be happy. Amen! Viserys! Viserys! I'm loving, loving Viserys. Viserys, don't you see through it? Like, do you not see through, Otto? You must have some inkling of him not necessarily doing what's right for the realm, but what's in his best interests and his family's best interests. Like, you have to see that. Oh. Your grace is sauced. His brother goes rogue. His daughter won't talk to him. He's at war, but refuses to admit it. Oh. Oh yeah, she's just like her uncle. Mm. What a gorgeous shot. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous shot. Right. I want to see once in this season a Targaryen like getting burned alive or like walking into the fire and coming out unscathed like Daenerys did a couple times in Game of Thrones. It may not be white, Lord Grace. Thinks a big lad. That's relief. That's what that is. He's relieved because it's not white. So it's the omen. He spent this whole episode getting bombarded by like people basically doubting his choice about naming Rhaenyra heir Otto and Jason Lannister and all of these people who doubted him. And then it was the omen of the, the white 
part that really said it and he just spent the last scene being like oh my god what if i was wrong what if i was wrong and now i think he's really relieved about his choice in rhaenyra <laughs> in this show is symbolism like they set up this whole thing for king of the Cerys, caught the animal gave him the sword to kill him told him exactly where to hit him to kill him and everything is just kind of set up perfectly for him and now they applaud him as if he did the whole thing on his own and wasn't literally guided as if they didn't hold his hand through this entire process. I think that really shows and symbolizes that Viserys is not, he's not fit to be king. He's, he's more of a lover, not a fighter. Oh my God, is that what I think it is? It's the white heart and it's presenting itself in front of Rhaenyra, the true heir to the Iron Throne. Oh, I have goosebumps. She said, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. I got some bacon, some pulled pork, <laughs> some ribs. You want her to be your lady away? Lord Jason Lannister? I don't think so. That's not her. It's not her. That's what Arya used to say in Game of Thrones. It's not me. It's not me. How are you feeling, husband? The gods have punished me for my He's hungover? That's what that means. He's hungover. I'm in there. Do you not think my decision correct? It is no consequence to what I think, as I'm often reminded. Just answer the question, girl! I have enough in my flesh. <laughs> Will you insist on taking Right, my like, can we have a normal conversation without you being shady? I do not seek to replace you, child. You've been much alone these last few years. Alone and angry. I will not live forever. I wish to see you contented. He sounds like every parent. Like, I'm not going to be alive forever. I want to make sure you're not alone and that you have a family. Me too. If it was for advantage, you would have wed Lena Valarian. It's true. You did. You followed your heart. That is true enough. Yeah. <laughs> you can't deny that. But Sarah's is a good man. Very obviously a good man. Strengthen your own claim. Shore up your succession. Multiply. She's just young, like she doesn't understand the advantage of getting married and having children, and that's. Make it yourself. Oh. Search him out. That is a major Find gesture. He's like, you can. Listen, you need to get married. Like, it's not because I'm telling you to. It's for your advantage, for your benefit, to strengthen your claim to the throne. But. You can choose him. Marry for love. But I swear to you now, him. on your mother's memory, you will not be supplanted. I, I, I don't know the books. I don't know what happens. And I just pray that he's not selling her dreams because that would be really messed up. Come on, Viserys, be a man of your word. All right. All right, looks like we're in the stepstones now. The crab feed has created a choke point here, beyond these dunes. Archers hold their high positions, foot soldiers hold the ground. It is so refreshing to see black people on Game of Thrones and playing major characters. What role have you played in this council, uncle, other than master of complaints? Enough! They it's the shade! Why should any of us? What you got to say about it, David? What you got to say? Damon is so intense. So it looks like Viserys sent a letter saying he was gonna come help. <laughs> I'm laughing because you know Damon is about to act a fool. Oh, oh yeah, see? Yeah, don't kill the messenger. Damon is just like a loose cannon. Like, do I think he would be a good king? No, like they're just so opposites as brothers. One leads with his heart and he's very emotional and kind of romantic. Damon is just a loose cannon, like, you just don't know what he's about to do. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Damon ra would rather die than give up and, and concede. He'd rather die than get, like, accept his brother's home. 
this is a ploy and if the crab feeder doesn't see that <laughs> i don't know what to tell him uh, he's looking he said where's craxies where is he at <laughs> he is an abomination to look at oh god this is like old school game of thrones tension I'm, I'm definitely feeling it right now like i just don't know what to expect i don't know what's about to happen you gotta have some guts to be the guy to get that close to daemon targaryen <laughs> One against thousands. This is very much giving Jon Snow. This is giving Jon Snow. Because Jon Snow would go against thousands to one. White Walkers, cavalry, like the Battle of the Bastards. When he just took his sword out and you saw all those horses coming after him. It's like, how are you going to survive this one, Jon? And he does. Where is Caraxes? Caraxes, come out! Caraxes! Here, boy! You're dead! It's like, he's not gonna die. Someone's gonna come save him. So sometimes shows like this, I'm like, ugh, I know, you're gonna be saved. Like, it's just kind of silly. Cause I just know. There, there's Corliss. I see your blonde wig, Corliss. And Corliss is gonna come save him. And then Caraxes is probably gonna come just kinda finish him off. Right, like, <laughs> perfect timing character. Oh, oh, that's not Caraxes. Oh, where's Caraxes? A, where's Caraxes? B, I don't know, Valyrians had dragons. That's a little baby dragon. I feel like the hair is a it's like a, a, a work hazard. Like, you gotta tie up the dreads, Corliss. Is that what I think it was? What you got there? What you, oh, okay. giving Rhaenyra from earlier in the episode. Wow. Wow. Wow is all I have to say. I don't know. I wasn't expecting the crab feeder to be killed in this episode. I thought that he was going to be the villain of the season, but Game, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones <laughs> said, you thought, you thought this was going to be the villain. No. Crabbeater's gonna die, and you know how inconsequential he is? His death is not even gonna be on camera. <laughs> like, we're not even gonna film his death scene. We are in store. We are in store for a lot this season, and I am very, very, very excited. Let me know what you thought about this episode down in the comments, y'all, because that was so many good moments in this episode, and finally we're getting back to the basics of season one of Game of Thrones. The first few seasons of Game of Thrones, just lots of symbolism, lots of like shady, snarky, smart writing and conversations, little looks at each other, like half of Allison's things that she did in episode three was just look. <laughs> like she just, she just gave people looks, and it really shows that She's paying attention, she's watching, she's getting smarter. She's taking agency over her role as queen and she's not as, you know, first two episodes she was kind of used as Otto's pawn and I think now she's trying to be agreeable with her father but also kind of take things into her own hand which is very exciting. I don't hate her, I do not hate her. Let me know what y'all thought of this episode down in the comments. I think we're really seeing parallels between Daemon and Rhaenyra. We're seeing Viserys and how easily he's swayed. We're seeing Allison and her ability to assess, uh, take feedback, but ultimately decide for herself what 
you know, things that she wants to do with her new power. So yes, let me know what you thought down in the comments. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you liked this review, go ahead and also give it a thumbs up. Uh, maybe we'll keep watching these episodes as they come out because this show is definitely in the, one of the more exciting shows I've watched recently. As always, I'm very, very, very grateful to you for watching. Till the next video.